Hey everyone, today we're talking all things veggie stock. So last time I showed you how to make chicken stock, long simmered, also known as bone broth, and today we're doing a totally veggie stock that's vegan. So both are great, you can use them for different things, um, and they both make a great base for your soup. So there's a few things about veggie stock that are obviously very different than like a bone broth or a chicken stock. One is that it's totally vegan, but two is kind of the way we make it. So a bone broth or a chicken stock that's long simmered to get the collagen out of the bones is really high in protein. It also has a lot of calcium and minerals from the bones in the, in the chicken or the turkey or whatever you're using. Vegetable stock is a little different. So we're gonna end up with a really delicious broth, but it doesn't have a lot of protein in it. So I wouldn't use this as a meal substitute. I use veggie stock as a way, I'll show you this, to save a lot of money in your kitchen and to increase the flavor of your food in a really great way without costing you more money. But it's because it's, it doesn't really have any protein in it, it's basically a non-caloric drink. It's really used as the base of soups or a flavor enhancer, or if you just wanna sip on it if you're not feeling well, you'll definitely not wanna use it as a meal replacement because it doesn't have any protein in it. But here's the thing about veggie stock. You, a good thing to do with veggie stock is to use what you already have. And what I mean by that is the scraps from veggies that you've already cut during the month. And let me show you this. So in this bag, this is frozen, I just pulled this out of my freezer. I have a lot of like random pieces of onion. So whenever you're cooking during the month, when you cut off a piece of an onion or a carrot or celery especially, throw it in a bag in your freezer. Now I try not to use a lot of plastic at home, but I do have this plastic freezer bag that I just keep reusing and reusing. I used to have a stasher this size, so you can get silicone bags, that'd be an even better idea. But I moved last year and I lost my big stasher, so I'll have to get a new one. Um, but here's the things that go really well in veggie stock. So onions or anything oniony. I also, I made some black bean tacos last night and I had a little bit of an onion left, so I'm just gonna throw it in here. When you make veggie stock, you don't necessarily wanna go buy a bunch of fresh veggies for it. You wanna use your fresh veggies in your food, but save all of your scraps or things that look like they're about to go bad, like these tomatoes I'm gonna put in here, they're a little wrinkly, so I probably wouldn't use them in a fresh recipe, but they're perfect for stock. So again, thinking using scraps, things that look like they might go bad. I have some whole carrots in here, or half carrots, that look like they were about to go bad a few weeks ago. So I just broke them in half and threw them in the bag. So a really good stock, the base of a really good veggie stock is onions and oniony type things like shallots, carrots, celery, a bay leaf, and whole peppercorns. From there, there are some really good things to add and some things that you do not want to add to your stock, and I'm gonna talk about that. One thing, if you tolerate mushrooms, and I love mushrooms, and there's a lot of health benefits of mushrooms, that you wanna to add to your stock bag in the freezer too is your mushroom stems. So mushrooms are a little bit of a pricey ingredient, so you wouldn't wanna like go buy a big thing of mushrooms to use in this, but what you'd wanna use it for is if you have stems left over or any mushrooms left over, throw them in there because mushrooms have a really umami taste to them, which is that kind of um, extra savory taste and adds a really nice um, flavor to your stock. Now, if you're allergic to anything that I'm talking about here, just leave it out, or if you don't tolerate it or whatever. The thing about veggie stock is that it's a really flexible recipe. So again, things that go really well, onions and oniony type things. I have a shallot here. I'm about to travel for a month and the shallot has been on my counter for like two months, so it's looking a little dry, so I'm gonna throw it in. When you put your veggies in, you don't want them to be dirty, but you can just cut them in half to break them open, but you can leave the skins and the roots on because we're gonna strain this. If there's any dirt on it, wipe it off or cut the dirt off. Dirt actually has some good microbes in it, but we're gonna boil this so that doesn't matter and you don't want a bunch of sediment in the bottom of your stock. Um, garlic is also fantastic in stock. Now, if you want kind of a basic stock recipe, only put garlic in it if you know that you like garlic and you like garlic in your soups and what you'll use this for. I really like garlic. So I just cut this one in half. You wanna open it to expose the surface area for flavor, but again, you don't have to chop it or do anything. You can just put the whole thing in. So again, in here it's like some stuff that was on my counter that looks like it might go bad before I travel, half an onion from last night, some garlic, and then all of my scraps, perfect, go straight in. And I have a few more things too. The amount of veggie stock you'll get from your veggie stock uh, depends from your recipe, depends on how big your pot is. So again, there's not an exact set like cups or measurements, but whatever size pot you're using, you wanna fill it about a third to a half way with veggies and veggie scraps. 
If you're using anything whole, like whole onions, cut them in half to expose the surface area. But again, you just want like a third to a half full. And then fill the rest of the pot with filtered water. Bring it to a boil, reduce it to a simmer for two to three hours, and then you're gonna have this really amazing stock after you strain it through a fine mesh strainer. But I'm gonna add a few other things here too that I wanna show you. So there's my, in here already are my scraps. Again, I have these tomatoes that they're, they're not moldy, so don't put anything moldy in here, but they just, they don't look great. They're starting to get kind of wrinkly. I like tomatoes in my veggie stock. Some people think it's too strong of a flavor, but I like a little bit. So I wouldn't fill this whole pot with tomatoes, but if you have some tomatoes that are about to go bad, just throw them in. I also have <laughs> these onions. Look at these crazy green onions. Have been in my refrigerator for about four months because if you leave the root end intact and you put them in a little bit of water, they'll just keep growing in your refrigerator and they won't go bad. So they might get a little dry, which is fine, um, but they'll just keep growing. But because I'm about to travel and it's just time to get some new onions because I've been using this bunch for so long, because oniony things go really well, I'll just put those in there too. So those go in. Um, I have this like random piece of garlic that again, I'm traveling. And garlic and onions and things, they last a long time on your counter, but they do start to kind of you know dry out. So again, just cut it in half to open it up. Put that in there. Um, I've got a couple of pieces of, pieces of celery that were in my refrigerator that I know they're going to be soft by the time I get back. So the only thing you have to do is chop them to fit. Those are going to go in there. Okay, and then a few things that also always go in stock. So whole black peppercorns are really inexpensive. Save your pink peppercorns and your white peppercorns and all the fancy ones. Save them for um, your nice recipes in your dishes, but whole black peppercorns are inexpensive. And you want to use whole black peppercorns, same thing with bone broth, because the little black peppercorns, one will can go through your fine mesh strainer, and it might not be something that you want to add to your dish later on, but they yield a really nice flavor in their whole form, and then they just strain right out. So about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of whole black peppercorns always go in. And then of course, always a bay leaf. And if my bay leaf is really small, I'll add two, but one is probably good. If you happen to live where you have fresh bay leaves, even better, throw a couple of those in. And then fresh herbs would also be great. So if I had some thyme, it's past the point that thyme is growing in my garden right now, so I don't have any, uh, but thyme, rosemary, parsley, um, basil, and dill all go really nice in stock if you happen to have any. Now, I don't have any fresh because I don't have any recipes for that that I've used it in recently, but I do have some dried thyme here. So with dried herbs, you only need about a teaspoon. So I'm gonna put a teaspoon, roughly, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of dried thyme just to give it extra flavor. That's kind of a classic flavor in stock. But again, think of like if, you're, if you had some parsley, you, you cut the stems off and you use the parsley in another dish, those stems have so much flavor, so put all the parsley stems in here. I would avoid cilantro in a stock. To me, that's way too strong of a flavor to put in stock, but if you're into it, then you can throw it in. So again, we've got onions and oniony type things, a couple of carrots, celery, whole black peppercorns, a bay leaf, some garlic, and some dried thyme. So, and again, oh, and some mushroom stems and some tomatoes. Mushroom stems and tomatoes are more like if you have them. And another thing that would go really well in here is fennel. If you like the taste of fennel, you could use the root end of the fennel or even the fronds. I don't love fennel and I didn't have any, so I'm not putting it in, but it is going to add that fennel-y taste. Bell pepper is also really nice to add here. Again, bell peppers are kind of a pricey ingredient, so I wouldn't buy one specifically for this, but if I had chopped one up for something else, I would save that whole rest of it, the inside, the seeds, everything, and I would just put it right in. I would avoid hot peppers in here, and especially the seeds of hot peppers, like jalapenos, because it's going to make it really spicy. So unless you're going for a really spicy stock, then you would wanna avoid that. The other cool thing, so this is a Le Creuset 26, um, pot on the bottom it has a number 26 which is a five and a half quart stock pot so if i fill this up this is about a half away full but because there's some um, water in the veggies i'm gonna get like three quarts of stock out of this so that's a lot of stock that's 12 cups so the idea is with your used your scraps bag if every month if you're cooking a few times a week and you are using onions and celery and carrots by the end of the month you should have a stock bag that's about half full to fill your pot 
and then you'll be, have 12 cups of veggie stock for the month to make. You can make it, um, use it to cook quinoa. You can use it to cook brown rice or any of your grains to add flavor. You can use it as the base of just about anything, or you can just sip it if you want something warm and savory. Now, I, with salt, especially with bone broth, we don't always add salt to stock so that you can salt it later with whatever dish you're doing. So you don't want to put too much salt in this, but salt actually does help draw out some of the moisture from the veggies. So I'm gonna add like, I don't know, like a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of sea salt. Use unrefined sea salt, there's minerals in here and there's not any additives and fillers. So I'm gonna put that in, but again, don't over salt this because you wanna add salt later to your dish and you don't wanna have too much salt in your stock, but that will help pull out some of the moisture from the veggies. And if you're wondering about all about bone broth, there are two different video tutorials on my YouTube channel and my website at elizabethwriter.com about bone broth to show you the difference. But again, the difference is that bone broth, we're gonna simmer for a long time to get the collagen out of the bone, so it's high in protein. Here, there's no collagen. And here's how you cook veggie stock. There's two methods. You can do it on the stove or in a slow cooker. And here's what's really different about bone broth. Bone broth, we wanna go about 12 to even 24 hours for that long simmered effect with some apple cider vinegar or some acid to pull the collagen out of the bones. With veggie broth, because we don't have that, you can actually overcook the veggies and kind of cook the freshness out of your stock flavor. The best way to do it, I think, is on, in a stock pot on the stove. You put everything in here, fill it with water, but leave about an inch so it doesn't boil over. Bring it to a boil, which will take about 20 minutes because there's so much stuff in here. Reduce it to a simmer and let it simmer for one hour minimum, but up to two to three hours. After that, you'll strain it through a fine mesh strainer and you'll have a really, really nice veggie stock. And you can keep it in the fridge for up to five days or freeze it for up to like four to five months. If you want to do it overnight, you can do it in a slow cooker. So like think of a slow cooker. Um, they're usually six quarts, so you'd wanna have enough to fill it. You might have to throw an extra onion or carrot or some things in there to get it half, third to a halfway full. Fill it with water and then Put it on high for like an hour just to let it come up to temperature, but then turn it to low because you don't want to overboil it. And you can do that for up to eight hours. So if you wanted to do that in the morning and then go run your errands or go to work and have veggie stock when you come home, you can do that. But again, you don't want to cook it. So you don't want to cook it for like what we do with bone broth for 24 hours. That would like way overcook the veggie stock and you won't have as like bright and fresh of a flavor. Cool? All right. A few other things. I want to talk about things that do not go in here for the simmering process because uh, it can either turn bitter or just overpower the flavor. So don't put any citrus in here. Things like lemon are wonderful at the end to squeeze some lemon into it. But if you put the lemon, especially the rind in here and then you simmer it for too long, it's gonna become really bitter. So you don't wanna do that. The other thing is that things that you don't wanna put in here, surprisingly, are cruciferous yeah. vegetables and greens. Save those for other recipes. So things like broccoli or cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. If you simmer them too long, one, they'll either either overpower or they will become very bitter and you don't want that in your stock or your fresh greens like kale and things like that so of course juice those blend them into a smoothie use them in another recipe get to them before they get bad you don't want to put those types of things in here so the really good things again onion celery carrot herbs bay leaf whole black peppercorns if you have them some mushrooms and tomatoes bell pepper is not bad if you tolerate it um, fennel could be good. Oh, the other thing, potatoes. This is a debated topic. You wouldn't want to put whole tomatoes in here. Potatoes, I'm sorry. You do want to use tomatoes, a few. Um, potatoes can make your stock really gummy. So I wouldn't like cut a chop of a potato and put it in here. However, if you have some potato peel, like if you peeled a potato for something else, a little bit of that potato peel, like from one potato that you might throw into your bag you know, if you peel a potato for something else, can add some viscosity to your stock and give it some body. So it's a little bit of starch in there, but again, you wouldn't want to like chop sweet potatoes or potatoes and put them in here because it's going to make your stock like super gummy. So you want to think of things that are more like celery and onions that aren't super, um, don't have that level of starch to it like a potato does. Okay, so I am going to Take this over. I have a Berkey water filter. They're not paying me. I just like Berkey um, for my water filter. I'm gonna fill this with filtered water, leaving about an inch so it doesn't boil over. Cover it. I have my cover, my lid somewhere. Bring it up to a boil and reduce it to a simmer. Leave it for two to three hours and then strain it through a fine mesh strainer into 
um, you know, a big glass bowl or something, and I'm gonna have wonderful veggie stock to use for the rest of the month that I'm super excited about. Okay, you probably wanna know how you can watch this again. You can rewatch this video and print this recipe. All of it's over on my blog at elizabethwriter.com. You can print the recipe, I'll link it below here, or just go to my website, go to elizabethwriter.com and search for veggie stock. I'll type all of it out, It'll be, it's all printed right there so you can print this recipe and make sure you also grab my free health, uh, 30 healthy recipes every woman should know ebook. So thanks for joining me for a few minutes